Okay, so now y'all got the group together. From right. your perspective, Brian, what was it like when y'all linked up with JD, and how did that whole thing come about? Well, it came about, um, like Brandon Wingo told, you know, Wingo went to school with Candy from Escape. Yeah. Um, we did a demo, and really, we was just, because Candy was already in the business, we just wanted to see what she what she thought about it. Yeah. We didn't necessarily think it was an opportunity going to come out of it. We didn't know that she was trying to, to branch out just yet. She was yeah. brand new in the game, too, still, basically, at that time, right? So, we gave her the demo. She listened to it. Um, and when she heard it, she was trying to tell Wingo, like, I want to help y'all do something with it. Yeah. I'm, I'm not just trying to give y'all my opinion on it. I want to be a part of it. Yeah. So after, you know, we gave it to Candy, she took it to Jermaine. Um, and and really, one thing that gets left out in this story a lot is is that it was it was a lot of Candy and Tiny, mm-hmm. right? Because Tiny was Zebo's woman, right? Yeah. Zebo was like Jermaine's best friend. Okay. So in order to really make this happen from a business point of view, where Candy felt like Jermaine was going to take it seriously, he wanted to, she wanted to kind of go through Zebo. Okay. So without Tiny and Zebo, this wouldn't happen as much as Candy. You know mm. what I mean? Though Candy was our manager and Zebo was Tiny just as, as well as we used to record in Tiny's studio. Mm. So they both were equally, um, in my opinion, you know, responsible for us getting that situation with Jermaine. So we walked in, we sang to Jermaine, he acted like he didn't like it. Um, we <laughs> left, we was, we did think, we, th- we thought we blew it, you know what I'm saying? We really did. And it was about to be a bad day. <laughs> I remember, I remember it's like, as soon as Candy put her, her hand on that mall door to open it, yeah. the phone rang, and she like, y'all hold up, so we didn't even walk in the mall. She went over there, she's like, hold up, this is Jermaine. She went over, she talked to Jermaine. When she came back, she tried to play it, but she couldn't play it. She smiling, ear to ear, she like, he wants y'all. She like, told y'all, he told me not to let y'all go nowhere else, he wants y'all. So from that point on, you know, um, a few months later, he brought us to the house, we started working on records, and we were so, so deaf from that point on, you know what I'm saying? What was it like having a young Candy as a manager, though? Because she was just getting into the game herself, right. but she already knew that it was time to boss up in this thing. Absolutely. One thing about Candy, I will say, is that the same Candy you see now, that's the same Candy she always been. Mm. She always had her mind, oh, like, and it's funny because even she'll tell you, when it, even, you know, all the big hits she wrote, yeah. like, we influenced each other because when we got with her, she wasn't a writer. Mm. We started trying to tell her, like, you know, when you're singing these melodies and you're doing this, I'm like, you're writing. Yeah. If you add them when a song comes on, if you learn how to put some good words to that, you're writing. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So we kind of opened up her mind to be, becoming a songwriter. And we would sit in her house, in her garage, and we would all put stuff together. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And she would run things by us, and it always sounded good. We like, you. I remember the first song she did, it ended up going on um, Escape's... Um, What's the lat that the, the, um, the lipstick the, mm-hmm. the trace trace of my lipstick yeah. album? It ended up going on that album. That was like the first song she wrote, but it was it was cra- it was dope. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So we was like, hey, you need to put that on the album. She put it on the album. So we always kind of influence each other and, and bounce ideas off of each other. But I think from day one, you could see Candy was somebody who just wasn't going to be satisfied with just being in a group yeah. or just being managing somebody or just you know what I mean? Yeah. She always. Thinking forward, you know what I'm saying? So now y'all end up with JD, man, and y'all are starting to get into this music yeah. industry. Yeah. What was that transition like going from just singing around town to being in the big leagues in this thing? You B? know, it's crazy because, you know, like a lot of groups did at that point in time, you know, to get a deal back then, you had to do a demo. Yeah. Or you had to win some talent competition. <laughs> we did all of the above. Yeah. We had gotten so popular on the on the, the talent show circuit that it was high schools inviting us to their talent show to be the special guest. Yeah. Like, it's like, we know y'all gonna win. We don't want y'all to compete. Y'all come and be the intermission <laughs> act. And we would do that. And like, and like, I'm gonna tell you a story I was telling somebody the other day that tripped me out, man, when I was a kid. I remember talk, meeting this girl. Mm. My homeboy had hooked me up with a, on, on the phone. You know how I used to go back. That's then. right. So we talking, and she asked me, you know, what kind of music you like? I tell her R&B, boom. She's like, me too. I say, so what's your favorite group? She's like, I don't want to tell you because you ain't gonna know who they are. Mm. So we started talking. I said, well, what's the group? She said, it's 20K. Oh. It was us. <laughs> right? So I'm like, you playing. Yeah. She's like, no, why you say? I said, I'm in 20K. The girl would not believe that I was in the group. <laughs> you know that's how much she liked it. She's like, no, I know you're not. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, yeah, that's my group. You know what I'm saying? So we had gotten so popular as amateurs that. The, the next thing to do, we felt like we got it. We got it. Got to be a deal out here for us somewhere. Yeah, you know what I mean, so we went from the talent show circuit. We did a demo. We started passing that. And as, and, and as a matter of fact, 
in high school, when we was on the talent show circuit, we had gotten offered a deal by Michael Bivens anyway. It just yeah. kind of fell through over his, he had overcommitted on too many acts and everything. But one thing about him, he called us, he, he gave us the option, and us being, you know, young and cocky, we're like, we'll, we'll just go get another deal. We ain't know it was going to be. Like, it, it was yeah. really going to happen like that. But we like, well, shit, we believe. Let's yeah. go get another deal. So that's what we did. And, um, you know, so so going from the talent show circuit to doing demos to mm. a guy like Michael Bivens wanting to sign us mm. to then we we uh, we actually had deals on the table from Rowdy Records. Mm. We used to go sit with Rico Wade or talk to him about signing. Like, we was talking to everybody in the city about, you know, giving us a shot at it. Yeah. Jermaine is just the one who came with it. Um. What's the word I'm looking for? Expediently. Yes. <laughs> you know he came with it fast, and then he gave us the opportunity to write. Yeah. You know, at one point, we didn't think we was going to get that opportunity, but he gave uh, us the opportunity to write our own records, too. So for us, that was like the deal maker. You yeah. know, some people say it's a deal breaker. For us, that was a deal maker. It was other people talking about something, but he was like, and I will give y'all the chance to write. After, you know, it was a little beef about it for a second, <laughs> but then he did give us the opportunity <laughs> to go ahead and write. So we like, we got to go with Jermaine. You know what I'm saying? Working with Jermaine and his genius and y'all genius together, right. man. What was that like? And then what did y'all learn from him being around him so early in the game as well? Man, it's crazy because one thing we learned off the top was you can't, <laughs> you can't, you can hang your hat on writing ballads, but to be well rounded, you mm. got to do more than write some slow songs. You know what yeah. I mean? So he taught us how to write faster songs and mid tempo songs. He already understood that we had that ability to write ballads and, yeah. and really good, strong ballads. So he gave us that. But at the same time, I saw Jermaine give an interview um, not too long ago, and he was and he said in the interview that they influenced me as much as I influenced them. And I and, he's, and I remember that that time because it was people around the city who knew us and heard our music and knew our sound. Mm -hmm. I remember when um, you make me want to come came out Usher yeah. song right. People was hitting me and my brother like, did y'all write that song? Sound like y'all in the background and stuff. <laughs> but if you go back before Make You Wanna, Jermaine didn't have songs of that style uh. before that. So I do see the influence we did have. But at the same time, Jermaine got one of the most amazing pens ever. Yep. So he didn't need much of our help <laughs> no way. But I mean, I do see where we influence some of his his ideas, you know, harmony wise and, and vocally, you know, we how we influence that. But the same thing with us. I mean, without his 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 touch on us, no fast song. Wouldn't be nowhere to party at. Wouldn't be no, you know, let's get married. And if you go back at that time, even he can't let... Every song, mm. we always had a fast remix. Yeah. And that was all, you know, because of JD. So he was like, just, you can't be so one-sided and yeah. one-minded, you know, singular-minded. So mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what he did for us. 